and requested thing that I get in the comments, which is a hair care video. Yay! <laughs> What exactly do I do to take care of my hair? I don't really have that much of a routine, which is probably why I've put this video off for so long because it's not really easy to just say I do this, this, and this because I'm really lazy and my routine changes quite often because of what I have on hand or what happens to be in the cupboard or what is within arm's reach. <laughs> once a month, maybe once every six weeks, um, I'll dye my regrowth blonde. Um, I use the L'Oreal Pre-Lightener. I usually do the pink maybe every two weeks. The pink that I use is Paintbox. Um, they're a subsidiary of Fudge. And I use Pretty Flamingo and also the lighter Pink Moon. Um, I've already done a video on how I actually do the pink, but I'll just do it when I'm washing my hair. So far as actually washing my hair, um, I probably do it maybe twice a week. And rather than using shampoo anymore, I have switched over to using baking soda. I like baking soda because it's quite gentle and it's natural and it works really well. And I think that it's really improved the condition of my hair quite a bit from when I used to use regular shampoos. Also, you can use the baking soda as a dry shampoo, as you would have seen in my previous video, linked somewhere here. Um, conditioner, I am generally using um, the stuff that comes with my blonde hair dye. <laughs> I find that I don't like to use too much of it because um, my hair tends to be a little bit um, oily around the roots. So I've been using the KMS Free Shape Quick Blow Dry thingy, which is basically it's a two layer thing and you shake it up and you spray it on your wet hair and it dries really quickly after that. Probably cuts down drying time by like, I don't know, three quarters really really good. I try to avoid using heat on my hair as much as possible so I don't like to blow dry it too much unless it's you know really really cold and I'm using the blow dryer mostly for warmth. <laughs> I will try to do pin curls if I have time the night before. Um, I also if I just want like you know kind of wavy like this wearing my hair in a bun the night before gives that effect really well. I recently started using this big comey thingy to brush out all the tangles because I know you're not supposed to use an actual brush on wet hair because it's much more um, damageable. Damageable? Is that a word? Yeah. It's much more damageable when, <laughs> when it's wet. So to get the tangle that, I've been using this Gigantor brush. <laughs> it looks like some kind of, you know, clown. Novelty cone. Yeah. Get it out of like the world's biggest Christmas cracker. <laughs> but it does the job. I try to only buy products that have a built-in heat protector because I figure, you know, if all the products I use have heat protector, you can't go wrong. If I'm not using any other products that have a heat protectant in them, I'll stick with the Tresemme, what is it called? Heat Tamer Protector Spray, Thermal Creations. Why do hair products have so many names? Seriously, you don't need like a seven word name for your product, just call it heat protector. As far as heat styling goes, this is my mini straightener. I use it for everything. But it's so versatile. You can get like really tight little curls or you can get big waves or pretty much anything. This is my other can't live without heat styling appliance. It's a VS Sassoon Big Hair. Basically, it shoots hot air out of it. When you press the button, it spins around. So it's like having a hairdryer and a brush, but for people who are uncoordinated like me. I use it for my fringe pretty much every day. Obviously, the most important thing that I use is my brush. This one, really good. Of course, mine is decoed, because why wouldn't it be? And I also use a teasing comb, which is super useful. Um, I used to just tease with my regular brush until one day I decided, hey, what the hell, this is only two bucks, and bought a teasing comb, and now I will never go back to my regular brush. It makes such a huge difference. Pretty much the only thing I ever use in terms of actual hair styling products is hairspray. The thing that I like about it is that it's brush out. So you could spray it in your hair, you can put it in really thick, I mean you don't have to because it's pretty good at holding. 
but if you want to, you can spray layer upon layer upon layer of it, and then at the end of the day, you don't have to wash your hair. All you have to do is brush it gently out, which is great for people like me who hate washing their hair. The other thing I've been using a lot lately has been this sea salt texturizing spray from Tony and Guy's new collection. And I'm not just using it because I was in their book, which I was, but that's not the point. I would use it anyway. <laughs> when I started doing all of like these crazy braids and stuff, the one thing that I didn't like was how sort of flat and close they were to my head. Um, braids like that are really good sometimes, but I prefer the big sort of puffy, you can really see the texture of the braid and like the weaving of it and everything. And the way that I achieve that is with this. A lot of you also asked what kind of tools that I use to hold hairstyles up. Um, if you don't see me using anything else, it's just bobby pins. Um, pretty much my entire way of doing hair is if it's not staying, add more hairspray and pins. Also asked me what kind of hair masks and stuff that I use, and the answer is none. <laughs> I've tried a lot of them, but just none of them really left my hair in a condition that was any better than to begin with, or they didn't have long-term results. The one that I tried recently that I did actually like was a Shiseido Professional Treatment Mask, or Pro Synergy Hair Cure for Professional. Again, long name. I've tried it a couple of times now over the last few weeks, Put like after washing my hair. Um, putting it through especially around my fringe because that's the part that gets the most damage um, and it has really improved the condition so that's been really good so I'll definitely I'll buy that again. As far as cutting my hair um, I do that myself purely because I'm a control freak. I don't leave split ends for a long time because leaving split ends while you're trying to grow your hair out is really shooting yourself in the foot because the longer you have split ends the further up the hair shaft they go and further you have to cut to get rid of them eventually. So people are asking how two years or two and a half years worth of bleach has not killed my hair yet. I've been following the instructions very clearly on um, all of the products that I use, so the dyes, the bleaches, all of that. You can see sometimes the ends of my fringe do get a bit damaged from the bleaching because they're the parts that get it the most often. The ends of the fringe tend to get a little bit raggedy. When that happens, I just snip them off. So I think that's pretty much everything. If you did have any other questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them next week. Or if you want to suggest a topic for next week's Friday video, add that in the comments too. These last few weeks have been pretty crazy, so I wanted to keep you guys up to date with what I've actually been doing. I was in a national campaign for Tony and Guy, which is called Hair Meets Wardrobe Blogged and Bound. Um, it's basically they took some of the top fashion and beauty bloggers in Australia and we did this amazing photo shoot in Sydney and there's a video, um, there's a link to the post about it in the description and if you want to check out the video where they followed me around for a day, <laughs> it's up here. I was in an episode of Tokyo Kawaii International um, a few weeks ago which was super awesome. I can't show you it yet unfortunately because it was a live show and I don't think I'm allowed to upload it. Um, I'm still waiting for permission to do that so once I get permission you'll be able to see me when I was on Japanese TV. Yay! <laughs> and I know you guys have been patiently waiting for more Pokemon news! Finally, after so much stress and drama, the charms, with featuring Bogomort's cute little face on them, um, have arrived. And they're going up in the shop on Monday in various forms. There's going to be charms, bag holders, all kinds of cute stuff like that. So, if you guys want your own little Bogomort charm, um, I'm probably going to be holding a competition on the channel next week. And the shop will open properly on Monday, so make sure you guys look out for news because heaps of stuff is happening. So I think that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the first of what will hopefully be many of these fun Friday videos. And if you liked it, let me know by liking, commenting, subscribing, whatever. Thanks for watching! Bye! Um, doesn't really move.